Magandang araw, oras na para sa pinakabagong balita sa lagay ng panahon at sa mundo ng science and technology. Ako po si Jel Miranda and we welcome you to DOS TV, Science for the People. Hatid pa rin namin sa inyo mula sa University of the Philippines, Los Banos, ang special coverage ng Second International Conference on Climate Change Research and Development at 6th National Climate Research Conference. Abangan ang aming panayam kay Academician Guillermo Tabius III tungkol sa climate change design parameters for engineering projects. Dito lang yan sa DOS TV, Science for the People. Narito pa rin po tayo sa University of the Philippines, Los Banos para sa special coverage ng National Climate Research Conference. At mga kasama na po natin ngayon ang chair ng Task Force on Climate Change of the National Academy of Science and Technology Philippines, Academician Guillermo Q. Tabios III. Magandang araw, sir. Hello, kumusta? How is the day? <laughs> <laughs> Mabuti naman, sir. Siyempre, kayo, baka may gusto kayong batiin muna. Ah, my wife, my daughter. That's about it. Ayon. Okay, sir, share nyo na naman sa amin yung inyong topic ngayon sa discussion dito sa conference na ginaganap sa Los Banos. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna talk about yung design parameters, mm -hmm. which is uh, when you build, you know, engineering structures mm -hmm. or even mga mitigating measures. Yes. Meron kang dapat uh, yung para, para parameter. Yes to base yung design mo. For instance, magtayo ka ng flood wall, mm -hmm. gaano kataas yun, mm -hmm. based on some uh, height ng wall dapat mm -hmm. na defined based on ano yung historical floods. Mm -hmm. So that's what we call design parameters. Mm -hmm. So in particular, I'm gonna, I, uh, my topic is on talking about design parameters considering climate change. So that's a little bit difficult in a sense because most of the time when we uh, determine yung design number na yun, or design parameter value, we base on historical data. Kung ano yung observed na in the past, yun na ating ginagamit, mm -hmm. ba, based on several years of uh, flood data, ganito kataas dapat, dapat we will design for that level of protection na ganito kataas yung flood wall. Mm -hmm. Ngayon, kung you're talking about climate change 50 years from now, 100 years from now, based on climate change na projections, mm -hmm which is based on your global climate models, downscales or local scales, ano yon? Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit of a, even that itself is a, it's not science at all, it's an art and science at the same time. So, so sabi niyo sir, uh, nagbe-base tayo sa history, let's historical say, nang, data. halimbawa sa isang lugar, itong lugar na ito ay bahain. So, so nakabatay tayo doon. So natin, ganun kataas yung baha. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll say, Kung i-provide natin uh, a better level of protection sa mga tao, ganito dapat mataas dito sa na-experience na natin. Mm -hmm. So, when you talk about yung more on a technical level, you will then uh, define yung uh, uncertainty as well as yung risk associated with that. So, you're talking about yung mga, meron tinatawag na anong design return period yes. on the average, Will it happen once every 50 years, once in 100 years, yung mga ganon. Mm -hmm. So, pero kung future nga ito, nagbago na lahat. Kasi you're not able to observe the future. So, how do you come up with those design, design parameter values? So, yun sinasabi nyo pagdating sa baha. Siyempre, ang lindol na andyan din. So, ganun paano yung almin, the seismic analysis, yes. and all that, the standard parameters na sinusunod natin. Paano natin matitiyak na ito yung tama sa isang establishment? Uh, of course, the concern here is climate change conference. So, it's more of 
the impact or the effect of climate change kung nagbago yun, after 50 years, 100 years, magbabago rin yung mga para uh, yung mga variables na yun, like meteorology, climatology, yung uh, resulting floods, yung resulting droughts, and so on. So yun yung ating, yun yung aking tinutok. And nowadays, iba-ibang tao, iba, me, medyo ad hoc, yung medyo here and there yung mga methods to estimate. Yes. Because uh, first of all, if you read really trace back, you know, yung global climate change models, they do simulation of the what will be the climate projection 50 years from now. Then when you talk about projection, you have to create scenarios. Yung different scenarios are based on different storylines. So, doon papasok na yung uncertainty. Mm -hmm. How good a storyline is that? Will that really happen? That's why we have A1, A2, B1, B2 scenario. Now we call it RCP 8.5, 4.5. So, but these are created based on scenarios. Ganto kadami na yung tao, ganto na yung technology, ganto yung land use. That's one scenario. Another scenario, different assumptions here and there. And then you, you downscale yung global climate model results into local scales, and na namang mga local factors that impact that. Mm -hmm. But all of these are projected uh, future scenarios, so mm -hmm. mahirap talaga. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what my topic is, how to come up with that. So what happens then is that if you really do it properly nowadays because of the uncertainty, pwede magbago pa, depende sa what we'll observe in the next five years, ten years, we have to have these kinds of parameters na iba na yung paningin natin. Hindi na pwede yung based on historical, ito yon. Rather, maybe we have some historical data. <coughs> you come up with some estimate, but maybe five years, you reassess mo, you recalculate mo, and then see kung tama ba yun. Then how do you design projects kung yung design parameter mo nagbabago, moving target? So maybe you have to create like a projects na pwede mo i-retrofit. Maybe okay ngayon, ganito lang kataas, pero if the ability to raise it higher yung flood walls, yung sabi ko, yes, as an example. And I think that's the reason why nowadays we talk a lot about resilience. Because the, the resilience from uh, not, there are several ways to define resilience, but from uh, what you call evolutionary resilience. Bale, since very evolutionary yung nature ng, ng earth, so to speak, yung climate, even your land use, political, economic uh, systems change vale, in, in, in time, and epochs in time, parang evolutionary vale siya. So every time we look into the future, it's always there is an element of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so young resilience in that case is no longer young traditional way in uh, defining resilience. It's uh, the ability to go back to the, to the, the normal system because maybe next time a disaster happens, you are talking about a different system because it has already changed. So resilience in that case should be like the ability to be adaptive. You have to consider the evolutionary uh, nature of things. Land use, nga, climate, etc. So maybe land use is short term, five years, 10 years, nagbago. Climate maybe 20, 25, 50 years, and so on. So you have to also consider na different uh, components of your Young Earth, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be, we are concerned with the prosperity of uh, the human beings living on Earth and to protect our environment. Iba ibang mga time scales yung ibang kwan. So, design parameters to build, again, I'm going back to a flood wall, I'm going to build a reservoir for a uh, water supply. Iba ibang yung parameters niyan, hindi na basta fix, nago bago bago na. So, those are things that. Uh, as I was saying, this conference is just on climate change. So, mm -hmm. just talking about climate-related na changes, bale. Uh, climate change na related, bale na, uh -huh. na mga design parameters. Uh -huh. That's all. That's quite a complex thing mm -hmm. to come with. So, yung parameters na sinasabi ninyo, sir. Ano ba yan? Pinapatupad na ngayon o uh, talaga uh, isinishare niyo na ngayon? Actually, like for example, DPWH. Okay. We have been talking about climate change maybe in the last 10 years, okay. 20 years or maybe 10 years in particular. But even our design of uh, flood control uh, uh, systems, mm -hmm. in Metro Manila, 
mababa yung level of protection binibigyan natin. Because maybe we're constrained, wala tayong pera masyado. Like Marikina, Pasig Marikina, uh, what you call design, uh, yung return period, is only 1 is to 40. I think before 1 is to 30 lang. Agno River Bay, 1 is to 10. When you're talking about uh, other parts of the world, they're talking 1 is to 100 na yung the rarity of the storm or the, the flood is 1 is to 100. Once on the average in long term happens once every 100 years. Okay. So then once in 20 years, or one in, you know, once in uh, 25 or 50 years, masyadong malaki ang risk of getting that flood over and over again. And now we talk about climate change. How do we deal with that? Supposedly yung magnitude ng 1 is to, let's say, 50 with climate change, maging every, every 1 is to 25 na lang. Every 25 years, yung, uh, yung recurrence, yung uh, average uh, time of uh, recurrence niya, as opposed to 1 is to 50. Kung climate change, 1 is to 25, imagine. We cannot even afford yung 1 is to 50. So, how can we realistically talk about uh, climate change, among adaptation measures, and so on? So, a lot of times, we do here and there, and uh, honestly, I, 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 I observe, let's say, impression as a government, there's money for climate change. Anything that you do related to climate change, you can get money, despite na, ano ba talang ginagawa mo? Maybe it's not quite efficient way of, or way of using money. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, uh, science can also properly or come up with some good way to determine here and there, but again, you're just, uh, Playing around yung uncertainty nga. The future is always uncertain. Anything in the, in the future is always uncertain. So, how to manage yung, kung meron ito yung pera mo, that means, ano yung investments mo dapat when you invest for climate change na mga, mga adaptation measures? How to use it efficiently? Yun yung sinasabi ko, maybe the ability to retrofit, the ability to, to, to change. Uh, Every now and then, you you look back and reassess. Kung this, is it working or not? But you cannot think in terms of what happens 50 years. You have to think piecewise, Bali, and which which you call piecewise engineering. That's the way. So, siempre sir, halimbawa, may mga establishment talaga na malalake, pwedeng na bibigyan ng attention pagdating itong safety uh, management, hindi ba? Pero halimbawa, ikaw isang ordinary ka nagtayo ka ng bahay, paano mo may consider na yung structure ng bahay mo ay safe? Or let's say naman may mga nakatayo na ay uh, probable pala sila o meron silang chance na magkaroon ng uh, ma mag na, na risk yung kanilang lugar, hindi ba? Paano masasabi na magiging safe naman sila sa pagdating ng panahon? Uh, I think it's, a it's the job of the government to define those things. You know? to, to be able to uh, characterize yung ano ba talaga yan. Like for example, I'll just give you an example. Uh, in California or even some other states or uh, other cities in the U.S., you're talking about uh, San Jose, which is the Silicon, Silicon Valley. Every year that uh, there is a water district done which covers watershed conservation, flood control, water supply, and so on. They keep on restudying yung mga flood design, uh, flood inundation areas, yung risk 100-year uh, uh, flood, anong mangyayari dito, and so on. Nagbabago-bago siya, nagbabago yung land use. Very, very uh, progressive yung cities around San Jose, yung Silicon Valley. Ano? But do we do that here? Do we really properly update yung mga, again, I'll, I'll, I'll summarize the design parameters. Yeah. We don't, I don't think so. Like even Metro Manila, I, I've done work sa, sa KM City and then even some parts of the country through with DBWAs and so on. Kulang talaga sa pera to, to do this uh, on a sustained and then regular basis. But that's the reason why, I, in fact, I, I'm, uh, I was involved in trying to create a apex body for water resource management. This, uh, there was a speaker earlier that they want to create Department of uh, yes. Disaster Resilience, mm -hmm. which is only one step. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not about risk management, no, or something. But anyway, talking about Department of uh, Water Management or maybe a Water Management Authority, because it's an apex body like the NEDA, it cannot be a department. It's not an implementing uh, agency. It may be uh, an agency to orchestrate all these activities, but among studies could be still, could be done by the, that that uh, unit or that body, so these kinds of things, 
dapat meron tayong investments, even just trying to analyze, to characterize, and then assess, to then prescribe, up, even after description, kung ano yung mga flood inundation here and there, ano yung mga areas na prone to flooding. But it's not only the physical uh, parameters that we are talking about, like gaano kataas yung flood. We have to look at the social and economic na, na dimension, like for example, from the economics point of view, and which is where the investments come in. You say, kung ito yung kagawin natin, ito yung ispen natin, then maybe we'll be able to cover these kinds of risk. But if we only do this, ito yung invest natin, ito yung, yung uh, <clears throat> magay natin, and so on, and so on. So maybe that's a better way of looking at things. We're gonna just say na, dapat itatas na ito. We're gonna just talk about climate change and then come with design plans. We really have to look at, you come up with this, you assess yung social, socioeconomic impacts or uh, socioeconomic effects nitong gagawin mo. And then maybe people will be able to think in terms of a, a proper investment. But as of now, as I was talking, telling you, Metro Manila, flood control, other parts, Agno River, Pampanga River Basin, yung level of protection na binibigyan natin sa mga tao is quite uh, very low. Because maybe we don't have money, or maybe the money is going somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so had, if you look at it, there is no major DPWS project flood control over a 50 year return period yung, yung kanya level of protection. Can you imagine that? Siguro Delta, na, sir, hindi ko lang ang pera natin. O nasa tamang paggamit lang. Delta, sa Delta Projects, uh, Netherlands, they have this uh, flood wall, di ba? Kahit na 6 meters, pwede pang i-flood wall yan, no? They designed the flood walls on 1 is to 10,000 years. I mean, the, in other words, 1 over 10,000, it doesn't mean that maybe it will happen. Pwede mangyari ngayon, mangyari ulit. But the risk value associated to that is so small. 1 is to 10,000 is point apat na zero bago one. Uh, uh, uh. Sa atin, isang zero point, isang zero patas two yung <laughs> 50 year return uh -oh. period. Very, very uh, uh, low level of protection. And why? Because people, once in a while, babahin kayo dito, okay lang yun, maybe. That's what our government Ingay. thinks. <laughs> anyway, pwede yung lumangoy yun sila. <laughs> once in a while, babahin kayo dito, hanggang dito lang naman. Uh, uh, uh. Pero pag gano'n, sige, tumagbo na lang kayo sa itaas, parang gano'n. Right? At mayroon mang ilang areas dito, sir, na talaga nabuhay na sa baha, yeah, hindi ba? People live in the Manggahan mm -hmm. floodway. That's a floodway. Mm -hmm. Why do they live in the floodway? You know, the Manggahan floodway, right? Okay. In Marikina, every year, yeah. meron silang alarm doon. Mm -hmm. So they invested in this alarm. Pag tumas yung tubig na 15 meters, meron so, magsasire yeah. na sila. Yeah. So that's the investment that you do. Is that good? Is that Kaya ang malabon. <laughs> Pareho rin. Oh. So, eh. All right, sir. So sa ngayon, ano nakikita nyo na talagang mas mabilisan or ang agarang solusyon na alam natin magagawa sa ngayon? Of course, one of them is so easy. Huwag mo silang patirin sa floodplain. Okay. But then you have to properly characterize ano yung floodplain na yun. Kasi meron yung tao dyan. Next year, ginawa mo study, two years, oh, hindi naman kayo binaha. Three years, hindi kayo binaha. Okay. Yung pala on the fifth year, binaha sila. Oh, it's too late when they go. On the other hand, like for example, the last 10, 9, 10 years, if you look at the history, uh, if you look at the climate ballet, there are droughts in the Southern Hemisphere. Australia was in drought and so on. Philippines, we never really have big storms. And then, wala yung, in other words, kung mainit dito sa South, hindi nakapasok basta yung mga typhoons so on. But then, 2009, we have this Ondoy. We have this... Uh, Yolanda. Sendong and Yolanda, mm -hmm. parang nangyayari in the last five years. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you say climate change. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that, it could be, it, you know, but the point is that uh, even those storms, even the Yolanda case, you know it, that uh, in 9, 1898, there was a bulletin, which you can read the uh, Manila Observatory, written by some Jesuit. Nangyayari the same uh, magnitude of storm, uh, the same storm surge, same winds and so on killed about 3,000 people. Considering na wala pa talaga mga tao doon sa Tacloban during the time, ngayon 6,000, at least 6,000 lang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying, the population is even bigger. Mm -hmm. But if you even look at back at the histories, mm -hmm. you can already learn from it na dapat gawin mo to, gawin mo yan. Okay. Pero we don't even have time to look at that. 
I don't know about the USD. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, baka meron pa kayong mga huling mensahe dun sa ating mga tags bye-bye. At ito ang inyong topic, baka talagang makatulong para naman maging handa kami pagdating sa climate change. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Pero I think I've said everything that... <laughs> <laughs> Any final yeah. words? So, definitely there's uh, the, the theme uh, today, which is a sub-theme of this uh, entire conference, is on... Uh, linking science, policy, and practice. Tomorrow, the sub-team is on uh, yung assessing yung the, the, the status of climate change na in the yung local status of climate change na mga uh, policies, uh, I think uh, even, yung, even the design plans and so on in the Philippines. So tomorrow, we really kind of want to reassess or assess ourselves. What have we been doing in the last 10 years or 15 years, are we doing it uh, this way or that way, and is it effective, and so on. So that's the idea. With uh, So uh, science technology, of course, always comes in. I'm coming from an NASD uh, person, as well as uh, I am a professor at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, so we always wanted to inject that, but as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's beyond, you know, it's beyond just science or physical or natural sciences, but social, economic, and all those other uh, sciences. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Maraming salamat. Nakasama po natin, Academician Guillermo Tabius III. Magandang araw po sa lahat ng ating mga kababayan. Narito na po ang latest mula dito sa pag-asa ukol sa kalagayan po ng ating panahon ngayong araw ng Wednesday. Meron tayong monitor ngayon na low pressure area at huling nga mata ng center rin ito base po sa ating latest analysis sa layong 420 kilometers silangan huyan ng kasiguran aurora. At ito pong low pressure area sa ngayon ay nakaka-apekto sa malaking bahagi ho ng northern at maging sa ilang bahagi po ng central zone. Kaya asahan pa rin ho natin na sa mga lugar pong ito ay makaranas pa rin ng maulap na kalangitan doon at mga pag-ulan dulot nga nitong nasabi kong weather disturbance. Samantala, yung ITCC o Inter Tropical Convergence Zone ay nakaka-apekto ng mga ngayon sa Southern Luzon maging sa Kapisayaan. Kaya para po sa pagtaya ng ating panahon, dito po, as I mentioned, dito po sa Ilocos, uh, Ilocos Provinces, Cordillera Administrative Region at Cagayan Valley Region, maging sa lalawigan ng Aurora ay magiging maulap po tayo sa araw na ito with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms. Dulot na nga po ng low pressure area. Samantala, dito naman sa uh, nalalabing bahagi pa po ng Luzon, dito po sa specifically sa Palawan area, ay pa, maaari pa rin makaranas ng maulap na kalangatan na may light to moderate rains caused by ITCC o Intertropical Convergence Zone. Kasama na po dyan ang Western at uh, Central Visayas. Maging ang Sambuanga Peninsula, ito pong mga lugar na ito ay naapektuhan po ng ITCC na pwede pong makaranas ng mga pagulan at pagkitla at pagkulog. Samantala, para naman sa pagtaya ng ating temperature sa Ligaspi City ay pwedeng umakapot hanggang sa 31 degrees Celsius ang ating maximum temperature doon habang sa Tagaytay ay malamig pa rin ho na pwedeng umakapot sa 28 degrees Celsius. Samantala sa Metro Manila, kung babalikan po natin, 32 degrees Celsius po ang maaaring maging maximum temperature natin for today. Samantala sa Mindanao naman, the rest of Mindanao ay makaranas ng ma uh, bahagyang maulap hanggang sa maulap na kalangitan lamang na may pulupulong mga pagulan o pagkidlat, pagkulog. At para sa pagtayo ng kanyang temperature sa Cagayan de Oro City ay pwede umabot hanggang sa 31 degrees Celsius ang ating maximum temperature habang 32 degrees Celsius sa Sambuanga City at 32 degrees Celsius din po sa Davao City. Wala tayong gale warning na nakataas sa anumang bahagi ng ating mga baybayang dagat sa araw na ito. Kaya't pinapayagan pa rin naman ho ng Philippine Coast Guard na pumalaot ang ating mga kababayang mga isda maging yung mga gumagamit ho ng maliliit na sasakyang pandagat. Dahil inaasahan po natin dito po sa part na ito sa Southern Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao, I like to model slight 
to moderate lamang ang magiging uh, pag-alo ng karagatan. Pero po dito sa Northern Luzon, uh, dulot na nga po ito ng masamang panahon doon, uh, weather disturbance itong LPA. At uh, inaasahan po natin ng katamtaman hanggang sa maalong kar uh, pag-alo ng, kar ng karagatan. Kaya at, uh, hindi pa rin ho gaano ina-advise na pumalaot po at least for today. Pero although hindi naman po sila pinagbabawalan ng Philippine Coast Guard para lamang po makasiguro tayo Uh, kung hindi naman po uh, need talaga na pumalaot sa araw na ito, yung maliliit na sasakyang pandagat, ay huwag po muna at ipagpalipas po muna hanggang sa araw ng bukas. Samantala, para sa ating um, weather outlook, at least in the next three days dito sa Metro Manila, bukas po araw ng Thursday hanggang sa Saturday o sa weekend po yan, inaasahan natin pa rin ang general fair weather apart from isolated rain showers or thunderstorms. 24 to 32 degrees Celsius po ang maaaring maging agwat ng temperatura bukas dito sa Kamaynilaan. 25 to 32 degrees Celsius po sa araw ng Friday and on Saturday. Sa Baguio City naman ay pwede pa rin uh, makaranas ng general fair weather apart from isolated rain showers or thunderstorms doon hanggang sa araw ng Sabado. 16 to 23 degrees Celsius ang maaaring maging agwat ng temperatura dito sa Baguio City bukas. 17 to 23 sa araw ng Friday habang 17 to 24 sa araw po yan ng Saturday. Sa Kabisigaan, particularly na po dito sa Metro Cebu, 25 to 32 degrees Celsius ang maaaring maging agwat ng temperatura all throughout the outlook from, from tomorrow po yan hanggang Saturday, having a partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers or thunderstorms. And lastly, on Metro Davao, dahil nga po, uh, inaasahan po natin na doon sa Mindanao ngayon, ay Sambanga Peninsula po ang magiging maulap na may light automatic trains but the rest of uh, Mindanao ay naasa natin ng general fair weather kasama na po dyan ang Metro Davao having party cloudy to cloudy skies na meron lamang mga pulupulong mga pagulan o pagkidlat pagkulog pagdating po ng hapon at gabi. 25 to 33 degrees Celsius ang maaari po maging agwan ng temperatura sa malabukas hanggang sa araw huyan ng Thursday at 25 to 32, 32 degrees Celsius naman po sa araw huyan ng, ng Saturday. Ang sunrise po natin kanina is 5.46 in the morning at inasa ang lulubog ng araw mamaya sa ganap na 5.44 huyan ng hapon. Yan ang latest mula dito sa pag-asa. Ito po si Lori de la Cruz. DOS TV would like to thank Filipino Creazione de Mano Incorporated. Visit their showroom at Ground Floor Lobby, PSM BFI Building, 318 Santolon Road, West Crame, San Juan City. Saitev. The world's leading source of reliable and authoritative news, views, and analysis on information about science and technology for global development. Visit their website at www.sidev.net. And that's it for today. For more information, just log on to www.dostv.ph and visit our social media accounts. Abangan din ang update sa lagay ng panahon mula sa DOST Pag-asa tuwing alas 5 ng umaga at alas 5 ng hapon. Always remember, in progress, science is the key. Kaya sabay-sabay tayong makiisa at gamitin ang siyensya. Kami ang DOSTV, the program that delivers science for the people.